Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwig Gladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the Tangle Plume from CCT Barbara Duell Johnson. Okay, so if you've been following daily, um, let's see. So yeah, today's Friday. <laughs> yesterday was Thursday. Um, and yesterday was Tangle time. And we played with uh, three different Tangles. One we had done uh, just prior. And um, then I shared um, one yesterday. That was Quillux by Debbie Monero. And so to round it off, uh, we'll play with Plume from uh, CCT Barbara Duell Johnson. Okay. And, you know, uh, there's so many tangles that are so fun. And um, this is one of them. All right, I think I'm going to do this. We'll do this straight on, I think. All right, well, yeah. Well, oh, sure, let's do that. Okay. So this one starts off with a big S shape. And, oh, and you can put a little, you know, an extra little something at the end if you want. Up to you. You could, too, if you're careful. You know, you could always add to it afterwards. Um, and then we're going to um, kind of aura a section of this. So using the take off and land concept, we're gonna, I'm going to take off here. And kind of aura as best I can. And then, oh, look at that. Meet up at the top. All right. And then here, too, you know, if you put a little extra flare, again, completely up to you. Next, down towards the uh, the bottom here where we started, I'm going to do some C shapes. And up to you, um, you know, how, how far... A, well, you know, I'm going to try to curve it a little bit more than I did before, like that. And then you don't have to pick up your pen. You could just come right back on it and do it, an aura of it like that. Same thing on the other side. That one is not so curvy, but it's all right. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, and now we were joking. It's like, okay, at this stage... It could look like, well, it could look like a, um, I don't know what my favorite was, um, uh, a peeled skinny banana. That I think that was probably my favorite. Um, I said it, it could look like a crane. Um, oh, it, oh, I, I shared this today um, at the uh, senior facility that I go to. Um, I said it could be, oh, no, wait, I lost it. Um, oh, a, a very skinny uh, fleur-de-lis. <laughs> sort of <laughs> um yeah and i said a crane uh it could look like the concord sort of kind of i don't know uh, i like to make stuff up all right because it's fun all right next we're gonna do a bunch of flux shapes and if well, if this is the first video of mine you you've watched sorry no not sorry not sorry um this is just how i like to do things um flux shape like this so and just in case you have it's just like that it's like a teardrop um maria uh thomas has called it a tethered orb because you kind of tether it here you know when you come you know the and you, like you kind of draw the orb and it comes back kind of if you think of it that way it's like blowing a bubble uh it could be a thought bubble or a speech bubble something like that and let's do another one over here like so and then we're going to go up both sides. Uh, I'm going to do this side first. Okay. And it's the same thing. Um, but what we're doing is we're keeping things separated a little bit. And I think that that is such a neat idea. Oh, just looking back at, at uh, Barb's, and, and she kind of cur curves hers. I have my, my has like a point here. She has more of a curve. Let's see if I can do that. Oh, like that. Yeah, that works. It, it it bottom line it dep it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> bottom line is just to do it and have fun. Oh, let's see if I can get a little one to flop over here because she does have one kind of flopping over the top like that. And then we'll do from this side too. Hmm. 
<laughs> and and I, as I'm doing it, I'm thinking, um, Heather, ideally, you'd like them to get a little smaller <laughs> as you go up. <laughs> Meh. Maybe. They are. A little bit. Um, and essentially, that is it. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. She does have one more step. I mean, honestly, you can kind of play at this at this point. But she does have us um, auraing these which I think looks nice. And I'm, let's see, what did I do in my, oh, okay. I'm going to do it differently just because I want to. I'm going to tether it right there as well, just because I want to see the difference uh, in my samples that I'll show you in a moment. I didn't do that. I just um, uh, like aura the inside. So there, there's a gap all the way around. Okay. Yeah. This one. Oh, sort of. However you wish to do it. And uh, the, um, oh, I should grab it. Um, you know, if I think of it, um, you know what, I'll pause when we when I get to that spot and I'll grab mine um, from uh, from today playing with it. Because um, I, I did mine rather small and far apart. And so I decided to add uh, a third aura and it's, it worked out fine. It, you know, it, it, just have fun and play. Okay, and speaking of play, just because I have to, I have to get a line dot dot in here somewhere, especially with these. Oh, you know what? I didn't, oh, I didn't do that in any of them. I'm going to do that in all of these. Or at least how, however it will fit. Yeah, that one, oh, not so, oh you kind of can see it. So lots of fun that you can have from this point outside of just regular shading. Actually, I, I do like doing this where we just add little wispy lines, but kind of going with the curve. And that's why I turned it so that way I get the natural curve of my hand. And just, like I said, just little wispy, wispy lines. And I'm going to uh, do it on the other end too, maybe. Oh, sure, why not? I did that this, uh, the one I was, I'll show you in a moment and, uh, it turned out kind of neat. Uh, let's see. And thinking of something different to do. You know, maybe I'll just shade that center because you can have, like I said, you can have fun with all of the parts of this. And I think I'm going to also, let's make that more and we'll, uh, make it more of a curly cue and then I'm going to expand that because it just looks neat when you do that. Actually, I could do it to both sides. The trick with thickening like that is to really have it merge in. Yeah, it looks okay. All right. Then for graphite shading, I can, you can also, even if you put the pencil marks, you can also put graphite in there. Oh, and I was, no, one thing at a time, Heather. Let's do this first. I get too excited sometimes. Oh, yeah, you know what? Let's make these shiny. And by making them shiny, it just means I'm going to go a little bit darker and bring it in. See, like that, towards the center a little bit more. And if you keep it kind of jagged, that's a good thing. Okay. And then let's just do one side of this carefully. Ooh, like that. That looks neat. I'm like I still have, see some pencil line, but I kind of I kind of like that. And you know what? And darker at the one at you know either end works. I'm going to use what's left on the tortillon here. We'll see. A little on each end here. Ah. And then these little guys. Oh, maybe the same thing. Let's just do that. Or yeah. Well. 
thinking, okay, we'll add some graphite to the base for sure, where, where the lines come together. Yeah, and then here's what I'm thinking. Let's just do the outer. Some of these are so small, it's, you know, it's not going to matter, but that can make the, the center part pop a little bit more. Yes, and it makes it kind of bendy. like that yes and then you could have fun with adding some drop shadows if you want and that's just kind of like I don't know I just guess you know it's it kind of like putting it underneath something a little a little off it, it really it doesn't just if you've not done it before and you think oh it looks neat but I'm, I'm afraid just try just play look at that you know, and what, and kind of like whatever you do, uh, like I like to say, you know, pick a side and stick to it. And this is similar, you know, it's like, okay, so the side was, or, you know, um, an area. So it's like, okay, to the outside of the flux shapes and underneath, and maybe a little extended to the outside of this, you know, that that's where my brain went and that's, and that's where it sticks. And so it looks kind of neat. All right, let me hit pause really quick. Be right back. Okay. It was like, I wasn't gone. Because you wouldn't know that it's the difference. I wouldn't have to really tell you what I know. I didn't. <laughs> but, you know, well, if you don't know me, that's just me. Um, all right. <laughs> what you see is what you get. And, uh, you know, I like to be transparent with everything. All right. So here's what I was. Here is, well, you know what? I'll, I'll save it for last, maybe. Um, nah, because I just talked about it, so I shouldn't. So this was the fun I had with this today. Um, and, uh, like I said, you can see the inner parts. Um, and I was like, like, they're awful small in comparison to here. So hmm, what can I do? What can I do? And decided, Oh, well, you know what? Psh, we'll just do another, uh, an aura around the outside. And so then I did that. I added some orbs also, uh, oh, I did do this on a different one too. Um, just thickening one side makes it look, uh, gives it some depth. Uh, and stuff like that. So um, just a lot of fun, a lot of fun. But I wanted to share that because there's always ways to course correct. If you are not happy, it's just fun thinking outside of the box. Um, and maybe you have to put it away for a minute, you know, and, and just, you know, take a step away, count to 10 or whatever, right? And, uh, and you know, see what happens. All right. So then, uh, and like I said, this I shared yesterday, but we didn't focus on it. Um, so this, let's see. Oh, I did the same thing here where I put orbs up the center and then um, uh, filling in those gaps is important. This one I was using the sparkle pop pens. Uh, same thing, you know, with the orbs in the uh, in the center. This one I just did the little wispy lines at the at the base and I didn't think about it till today. I'm like, oh, you know, I can do that on both sides and then add some. Uh, well, actually, this is uh, General's uh, chalk pencil um, just for fun. Okay, and then, and that was, yeah, that was pretty much all I did. I just, I really emphasized the, uh, the one side on these and just added some shading. Oh, and some, and some white, some white graph, um, chalk pencil. And then this one from this, these two are from the, our Tangle Time session. Um, this was one of these, I don't know what, I, I wasn't, I didn't know what I was thinking about doing. I was just doing, and, um, I was using, um. Uh, a jelly roll, kind of the, oh, here it is, it's a teal-ish color jelly roll, that, you know, moonlight one, and it wasn't showing up real well, at least as far as the camera goes when we were doing this live, and so I came back afterwards and just and added another layer of it, and you can see it a lot better. It was just, do I have it on the back? No, but it was just, as it dried, 
or you can see as it's drawing right now, it just kind of, it gets really light, and so the contrast is just a little bit weird. And let me not put it on top of there as that's wet. Um, but anyway, so I I went through a you know, second uh, redefined the lines because as I added white, added white charcoal, added graphite, added a, another color in there because like I said, I I was just like oh maybe I'll throw some Zen bossing uh, ish. <laughs> type of stuff in here and um you know it's fun to just let go and and just say i'm just gonna play and just play and you know i don't know it's a heinz 57 of the the techniques and things that we play with but i like it it came out kind of neat so um so anyway just you know so so much fun with this one and i have i hope that you have enjoyed this and if you have uh, please click on the like button <laughs> and if you liked it enough to see more would love to have you be a subscriber to the channel in the description section you will find links to the step outs uh, I always do my own version and then link to the creator of the tangle uh, and then below that you'll find my link tree and there you can find you if you know if you want to connect if you would like to do if you would like to take part in you know class like this this is a free session so I do this every Thursday unless something really weird happens in my schedule but then I do give you know nice notice um, but I do it you know two times a day 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern time that's my time here in Michigan um, but there's places to follow me so there's links it'll say classes on whatever um, the only one that I don't have listed separately is Facebook so if you follow my page or Better yet, if you want to join our um, Tangle Addicts community, you certainly can. That link is there as well. And I post, when I post on Facebook, I then share it with the group. Uh, so you'll see it there as well. The advantage to following me uh, on any of those, any of the platforms listed is that it shows it in your time zone. And then also if you say, yeah, I'm interested, yeah, I'm going, um, you know, basically register for it, then you'll get the reminders and all of that kind of stuff. So. Uh, that's why I like to make sure to be clear about that. But it, it, again, if you're interested in joining our, our Facebook community, I, I do want to make sure that you know there's four questions that you have to answer in order to gain entry. Um, I just like to make sure people are aware of that. And let's see. And, oh my gosh, we have so much fun. Um, so much fun. And let's see, what else do I want to mention? Uh, that, the classes... Well, I think that's it. Everything else, I mean, you can just explore on that link tree and have fun. All right, so with that, thank you so much for watching, and I wish you happy tangling. <laughs>